So with that, we will um, start the annual meeting of the Northampton Housing Authority on uh, second uh, of, I mean, February the 27th, 2003. And so I will call the meeting to order. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, would you like me to call the roll? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, Chairperson Richards? Present. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Brooks? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Carney? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Jones? Uh, point of order, don't we have to vote to go into the annual meeting before mm. we actually take the roll call of who's in the annual meeting? I don't have that. I, I, uh, that's a Tom question. And let's see, he was here, he oh, was oh, here. Right, right next to you. I'm <clears throat> slotted right next to you on my screen. No, just call it to order and do the roll. Okay. Okay. Here. Okay. Thank you. Um, and commissioner Cancel. Here. Thank you. And commissioner Tarbutton. Present. Thank you. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, for the first order of business, we have the approval of the 2022 annual meeting minutes. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any corrections or additions? Yes, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, I have two things actually. Um, may, I remember last year, uh, uh, Commissioner Cancel, I'm not quite sure, but I think it was something about, uh, it, it wasn't video, so I can't go back and check it, but something like something was slightly amiss and they say you have to wait to the next year because this is about what, 2022? Okay, this we're only referring to the minutes here. If you have something that otherwise, um, if anybody can no well clarify this for me please is that this is not about the annual meeting this is the annual About meeting the yes. meeting. okay so we're not voting on the annual meeting we're voting on the minutes of the uh 2022 annual meeting right so that's what i that's what i meant i thought that there was some kind of an issue uh with that um uh, Commissioner, I don't want to put uh, words in anyone's mouth, but I thought that there was an issue with that, and then it was supposed to be like bring it back to this year or something like that. So um, I had that question. I was seeking clarity on that. Okay, I don't know anything about that. So um, we've had a motion and a second. Uh, if there are no other com comments, uh, uh, we'll have the secretary call the roll. Yes, approval of the 2022 annual meeting minutes. Chairperson Richards. Approve. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Brooks. Approve. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel. Commissioner Cancel. I'll come back to Commissioner yeah. Cancel. Commissioner Tarbutton. I'm going to abstain. There's some confusion here. So. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Thank you. And let me come back to Commissioner Cancel. Can you hear us? His, vo oh, his voice is off. Yes, yes, sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. And that was a yay? Yes. Well, I don't. Thank yes. you. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you. Madam Chair, with um, five yays and one abstention. It carries. Would you like me to proceed with the rest of the annual meeting for the election of officers, Madam Chair? Yes, uh, please. Thank you. Thank you. The minutes are approved. Thank you. Okay. This is the annual meeting, um, election of officers. May I please have a nomination from the floor for chairperson? Commissioner Brown has his hand raised. I nominate, I nominate Maureen Carney for chairperson. Attention. I'll second that. You got to leave Roy. Okay. Um, and no, with no other uh, nominations from the floor. I, I, I have a nomination. Oh, do you? I thought, I thought you did it per person or something like that. No. No. I'm asking well, for nominations from the floor for chairperson. 
Well, I'd like to <clears throat> nominate uh, Eduardo Cancel. Do I get to tell you why? Um, just a moment, please. Okay, there's a strange nomination process here. You don't get to um, explain, you just- is there, a, is, there, is there a second for, um, uh, Edgardo Cancel was nominated by Joella Tarbutton. Is there a second? Okay, hearing no second. Wait, I'll what, second. wait, wait. I'll second. I'll second. Who second that? Uh, Edgar, uh, Edgar, Commissioner uh, Cancel, it's been told to me by the uh, Attorney O'Connor, could you please clarify as to whether someone can second their own nomination? My understanding is you can't. You cannot. I've never heard that. Can we look it up? Can we? No is there anyone that we can call, please? But can't That's a person? That's not a problem. I'd rather not. I'd rather <laughs> not. You rather? Cannot a person nominate themselves, Attorney O'Connor? Are you saying uh, you're you're muted still? You're muted. You're muted, Attorney O'Connor. Um, I've never heard of someone seconding them themselves. Uh, well, they can nominate themselves, right? Nominate themselves. So, um. But uh, you're not sure they can even I not. I don't have time to, you know, research the issue on the spot. So I, I don't. Because um, we were all under the impression that a person could nominate themselves. I think we, we that was best. I think at the last meeting, we said that a person could nominate themselves if they should <laughs> wish. So I think it just changes things up. If now we're saying that a person cannot nominate themselves. Or second, I thought I heard Commissioner Cancel say no. Um, I, so I so I'm I'm gonna I'm going to ask everyone to pause for a moment. Um, Commissioner Cancel has his hand raised, but you are muted, Commissioner Cancel. Uh, please go ahead. Hi, right, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Kara. Um, I am pretty sure that someone can nominate themselves. I never really have heard of anyone. Uh, seconding um, uh, a nomination for themselves. Um, but I figure since somebody nominated me, I, I, at least uh, the best I can do is uh, not <laughs> second it. But I am okay with continuing with the process um, and um, and going on uh, without, um, you know, nominating me or, or, or seconding uh, myself for the position of chair. So thank you. Um, uh, uh, Joella. I have a, okay. I do have a question. Yes, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton, go ahead. Well, yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I think that, um, I think Maureen would make a, a fine um, chair. I, I've, I've, I've gone, begun to really appreciate her input. I, I, she reminds me a little bit of myself probing <laughs> questions and trying to get clarity. And I especially appreciate her last meeting when my phone or computer went off and she said, wait, can't we at least, you know, give two or three minutes. So I appreciate that. Um, the thing is what I'm thinking here, and this is the only reason why I, with Eduardo, um, I had thought of someone else and they said they, they weren't interested in it, but I think that, you know, Maureen, and you've had work with the city council, you've been on the board before, let's give somebody else a chance who haven't. And I think that a resident being a chair is pretty profound and somewhat reflective of the town that we live in. And I think Eduardo would be a wonderful, and he's been, he's been here. I'm not saying you have to have a certain time phase to come and do something, but he's been here. And it seems in a way is that if we pass him over, I don't think without giving him an opportunity I think that that's something. And I, I, I have a real problem with the nomination process because when you're doing an LTO, it's this voting, this vote here. Nomination is like, do you people call on each other? Because that gives me anxiety uh, when that happens. But I think that, I think we need to be reflective of the people that we, that we tend to. Our stakeholders would be residents, housing, and the community. And I think he would make an excellent choice. So I would hope that he would, take this in the honor he is. If not, I mean, who can go bad with Maureen? Um, so uh, that's why I'm firmly. 
Thank, thank you, Commissioner uh, Tarbuck. I didn't, um, I didn't get to finish though, sorry. Commissioner Cancel has declined. I, I, firstly, I didn't get to finish very quickly, please. So I just all said- Our vehicle, all our to be off the property, right? For... No, that's a, that's a resident whose phone that's is- That's Roy. I just muted, it was, yes, it was a resident. I muted him. Um, Commissioner Cancel, I'm sorry, your hand is still raised. Is that from the last time or did you need to speak again? Uh, thank you. It was from the last time. And, um, yeah, I would appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak again if it's okay. Certainly. Um, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you, Joella, um, uh, for your kind words. And um, I have to say that I agree with Joella in terms of uh, Commissioner Carney being an excellent uh, chair for us. Um, uh, not only because of her experience as a city councilor, but also her previous experience being on the board. Um, and uh, in fact, though, uh, that was the person that I was thinking um, would make a great um, uh, chair for us. Um, I, I'm also appreciative in um, understanding and um, uh, agreeing uh, with Joella in terms of um, uh, the opportunity that would be given to a person who has been uh, a resident and has been here for a little while. So either way, I feel 100% um, great about either person becoming a chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Cancel. And um, I just heard back from Attorney O'Connor. Um, it has come to light that a second is not necessary. And so um, being that uh, Commissioner Tarbutton nominated uh, Commissioner Cancel as chairperson, um, I shall now conduct a vote. Uh, Karen, the only thing, if I could jump in for two seconds, the, there's an unless there, unless our bylaws require it, and I don't have a copy of them in front of me, but from memory, our bylaws do not require a second. Uh, just a moment. Let me let me verify that. I, I have it electronically. If you give me just <laughs> and we should, well, we should close the nominations because there may still be <clears throat> more nominations from the floor especially now that we know that a person can self-nominate. I'm sorry, what'd you say in the beginning part, Maureen? I didn't hear it, I'm sorry. What I said was that we should continue to take nominations from the floor in case there are commissioners who would like to self-nominate now that we know that that's allowable under Robert's right. rules. Give me just a moment. Um, I'm just logging in to our internal server uh, and pulling up Okay, bylaws, and I am going to just do a search for the word second. Um, maybe it would be under election of officers, because we know you, that you need a second for any usual motion. I think it's only referring to the elections that he's saying that you may not need a second for a nomination. I don't think our bylaws say, but... I don't think they do. They just list the officers, but I, yeah, I, like exactly. I said, I don't have... Which case falls right to Robert's rules. Yeah. Which don't require a second, you said. Not at all, no. Okay. So you thought it did earlier? I did, Probably. but I'm, I'm, yeah. I would have. Thanks I for looking at it. Yeah, it's one of those quirky things because mm -hmm. everything requires a second, apparently, except the nomination of officers. <laughs> okay. Um, it is not in the bylaws. So, um, so then let me come back to you guys so I can see you all. Um, and uh, I currently have a nomination for chairperson of Maureen Carney, and I have a nomination um, of Edgardo Cancel. Are there any other nominations from the floor for chairperson? Quick question. Does a person who 
and nominated and seconded need to state whether they will accept the nomination? Uh, Tom? I don't think they need to state whether they'll accept it, but if they don't want it, they'll speak up and say they don't okay. want it, and that's the end of it. Okay. No objections. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I shall call a roll. Um, if you could just state when I call your name who you would vote for, please. Uh, Chairperson Richards. Uh, Commissioner Carney. Vice Chairperson Brooks. Uh, Commissioner Carney. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Carney. Uh, Commissioner Cancel. I uh, vote for myself, I guess, if I could. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Uh, Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, definitely uh, Commissioner uh, Eduardo with Marina's VP. Thank you. Um, uh, and so um, with... Uh, vote for me. Uh, yes. Uh, Commissioner Carney. Carney. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. I forgot about you. Uh, so with uh, four for four for Commissioner Carney, um, Commissioner Carney uh, becomes chairperson. Thank you. Um, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, congratulations. May I please have a nomination for the floor for vice chairperson? I nominate um, Commissioner Kensel. A second that. May I please have a second? Maureen seconded. Thank you. Okay, and are there any other nominations from the floor for vice chairperson? Yes, I'd like to nominate Joella Tarbutton. Okay, um, Joella Tarbutton. Are, is there a second for um, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton to be vice chair? I didn't think you had to have a second. We don't, don't need have second. to, but I'm just calling to see if there is a second. No second? Okay, so are there any other nominations from the floor for vice chairperson? Okay, hearing none. Um, when I call your name, if you could please tell me who you're voting for. Um, uh, Can, I'm sorry. Chair. Chair. This is for the vice chair. And so, um, um, Commissioner, uh, Chairperson Richards. Uh, Commissioner Kentel. I, I had a qu question. I'm sorry, I'm raising my hand. I was asking chair, chair. Am I mooted? Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, I, uh, the executive director is the chair. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Oh. For the annual yeah. meeting, executive she director. conducts the, the voting. It's yeah. in our bylaws. Yeah. As the secretary and the executive director. Go, go ahead, Commissioner Tarbutton. You're muted. You're muted. Item. I just think, I think the whole system is kind of a little strange. People don't even get to say what they can contribute, why they would be good at it. It's just like, this is really important that it needs to be kind of vetted and streamlined and more efficient in a sense. And um, that's all I have to say. It doesn't seem very, doesn't seem very fair or very uh, productive in that sense. It's like more the same, but old buddy kind of thing. Thank you. I appreciate your comments. Um, we do follow the Roberts Rules of Order. Uh, and so I'll proceed with the roll call vote. I have um, Edgar Cancel from Mar uh, Marilyn Richards. Jim Brooks, who would you uh, vote for, please? Uh, Mr. Cancel. Um, Jeff Jones. Commissioner Cancel. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel. Who would you vote for for vice chairperson, please? 
Delilah Tarbutton. Thank you. And uh, Commissioner Tarbutton. Well, I am going to abstain just because I'm not 100% um, sure of the process here. So I appreciate it, but I, I don't want to affirm something that I don't believe so, in. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Carney. Commissioner Cancel. With four yays, um, four votes, uh, Commissioner Cancel is um, officially vice chairperson. May I please have a nomination? Congratulations. Um, may I please have a nomination from the floor for a treasurer? I, I nominate uh, Commissioner Brooks. May I have a second? A second. Are there any other nominations from the floor for treasurer? Yes, I was going to no nominate uh, Marilyn Richards. Is there a second? I would decline. Thank you, Joella, but I would don't think I'm the best person. <laughs> okay, thank you, um, uh, uh, Commissioner Richards. Uh, Commissioner Cancel, you have your hand raised. Is that a new raise or an old raise? And you're muted. Uh, no, uh, yeah, it's a, a raise to uh, make a, a nomination. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner Cancel. Uh, uh, nomination for Joella, Joella Tarbutton for treasurer. Okay, is there a second? Okay, and so uh, I will call a vote. We have two nominees, um, Commissioner Brooks and Commissioner uh, Tarbutton. Um, Commissioner Richards? Commissioner Brooks. Commissioner Brooks. Commissioner Brooks. <laughs> yep. Commissioner uh, Jones. Commissioner Brooks. Uh, Commissioner Cancel. Commissioner Tybutton. Commissioner Car uh, Chairperson Carney. Commissioner Brooks. Thank you. I feel like I forgot someone. Commissioner Tarbutton, did I call you? No, you didn't. You know, I will vote for myself because this is what I'm the weakest in a given opportunity. It would have to be a master class so I can learn all of that. So never would think I would be affirming me with treasurer, but I think, yeah, why not? I will. Okay, thank you. Uh, so. Jim Brooks um, is voted as treasurer with four votes. Um, Commissioner uh, Tarbutton received two. Uh, congratulations, uh, Commissioner Brooks, and thank you for your service. Thank you. May I please have a motion to adjourn the annual uh, 2023 meeting? Motion, motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> Tied. And a second by uh, I'll Commissioner second. Brooks. I'll second. Thank you. So at 5.55 p.m., the annual meeting of the Northampton Housing Authority is adjourned. Thank you. And um, Madam Chair, um, would you like to call the regular meeting to order? Uh, yes, please, if you would call the roll call, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. 5.56 p.m., the regular meeting of the Northampton Housing Authority, February 27th, 2023. Uh, roll call, Chairperson Carney. Present. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Richards. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Here. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, all accounted for.
Thank you. So I believe we then switch right over to tenant comment according to our agenda. So Jack, do you want to identify those waiting in the galley for us, please? Absolutely. Yes. So the oh, first person, the first person who is is being unmuted, phone number ends in five six three nine. Five six three nine. You are being unmuted. Let's give him a second. If not, we will move on. And let me uh, before you do, Jack. Just remind uh, folks who are waiting in the galley to give comment <clears throat> that um, we have a three minute comment rule presently in use and we cannot respond to comments that are given to us, but we certainly do take note of the, um, of the questions and concerns that will be raised and you should hear back from someone from staff uh, regarding that concern but you will not have a direct response at this meeting. Yes, Jack, next person, please. Okay, phone number 5639, you are ready to speak. Please let us know your full name and which um, complex you live at. I just, you're unmuted and you were just talking, go for it. I believe that's Mr. Martin. All right, we will come go to the next person um, I have on the list is uh, Angela Santanella. Yeah. Hello, this is Angela Santanella, Walter Salvo, apartment 425. Um, I just wanted to bring to everyone's attention, the Neighborhood Watch um, applied for one of the ARPA grants from uh, Northampton, the city of Northampton back in October. And last week we were awarded a grant. Um, we had applied for a $10,000 grant and we were awarded $9,639. And we're, we've got several different things that we want to accomplish here at the Salvo building. Um, but we're in the process of accepting the award and then going through those processes too. So everything, it takes time, but we're still plugging along and trying to do positive changes within our community. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Next person who has the ability to unmute themselves is Gwen L. Nabad. Um, yes, hello. My name is Gwenda Bad, and um, there are lots of residents that have disabilities. And many residents do not receive their disability money except for once a month, and it's a fixed income. And on February 6th, which was a day earlier than what the lease states, which is seven days, uh, residents were served with late payment notices. Um, and I don't think that's okay. I think that there are exceptions uh, that I discovered under Mass Legal in terms of uh, sort of like embedded modifications um, in the lease. But when I contacted the pro program, the property manager to discuss it with her, she told me too bad, you signed the lease and you agreed to it. And I was assured before I signed the lease that me getting on being on disability or anyone being on disability and receiving certain amounts of money at certain times of the month would never ever impact or cause a late fee and what happens or even a late notice because that then goes into the rental record. So I'd like someone to look into that and what the law is under the American Disabilities Act. Thank you. Okay, and then we're going to circle back to the phone number that ends in 5639. Just one final attempt. Uh, and it looks like uh, Commissioner or Chairperson Carney, there are no one, there's no one else present for comment. Okay, then may I just ask if there are any staff comments since that's on our agenda? And Speak up if there are any and 
Hearing none, I'll ask are there any further public comments? Everyone is accounted for, no one from the public. Okay, thanks. Then the next item on the agenda will be the approval of the January mi minutes that were sent out to folks in draft form um, earlier this week. So I would ask if there is someone who would offer a motion to approve the January 2023 minutes. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I'll ask, um, are there any, uh, is there any discussion? Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions? An addition, correction, or deletion, please. Yes, Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes. Um, for some reason, I didn't get my packet. Not that it, I'm not saying that it wasn't delivered, but I didn't get it timely. And uh, I'm sorry, am I, is my phone echoing in here? Is that my cell phone? Um, and uh, there were just some of the things. So I didn't know, I, I, I saw the draft and I made some changes to it and I hadn't seen the one if the changes were adopted or not. And so um, I get concerned about this. So, but luckily we had a good uh, meeting where we were told how to do or given directives on how to do minutes that are less complicated and time consuming. And uh, so that makes uh, me feel uh, a lot better, but Without the changes that I added, I, I can't vote. I can't vote positive on this. So. Any other additions, corrections, or deletions from the floor? Okay, then I'll ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Thank you. Approval of the January 2023 minutes. Chairperson Carney? Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel? Thank you. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton? No. Madam Chair, with five yeas and one nay. Okay, then that, that motion carries. And it looks like I missed... I, I uh, misread my bullets there, but it looks like we had on the agenda the executive director's report followed by the approval of the minutes, but I think we're okay to just jump back to that report if folks are fine with that. And I'll hand it over to executive director, please. Thank you. Give me just a moment um, because now my, my pages are out of order, if you don't mind. Thank you. Okay, uh, executive director summary, February 2023, our GPR was 212,175, collected 204,349.35, which is 96.4%. Delinquency total is current residents, 88,243.13. Uh, public housing had no certifications for the current month. Section 8 had 53, uh, and they completed all of them. Our wait list, federal applications, one bedroom, 174, two bedroom, 55, three bedroom, 16, four bedroom, two, section 884. State applicants, the families, uh, consists of 16,489 applicants, and the elderly disabled consists of 4,232 applicants. We had four move outs in public housing, three in section eight. We had six move ins in public housing, four in section eight, and we have one on notice. End of month vacant ready four, end of May month vacant unready four, total end of month vacant is four and they're all pre-leased. We completed four rehabs, all, all, we completed four make readies, all of which were rehabs. We took in 620 work orders um, with 37 from the prior month and we completed 549, leaving 34 incomplete as of today. Um, our RSC, our family RSC uh, met with Grow Food Northampton and Healthy Hampshire to discuss future plans for the upcoming garden season, such as programming and event ideas to get more residents involved. We hosted a community forum in the Hampshire Heights community room with Grow Food Northampton to hear from Hampshire Heights residents what their ideas and goals are for the community garden this year. 
The podiatrist, Dr. Colby, visited Salvo House and was booked solid for the entire two and a half hours with 25 residents utilizing the service. We're happy to share that this is the highest number of residents we've had in one visit since he started coming to the properties. We delivered Valentine's Day cards and candy bags to each household at Hampshire Heights and Florence Heights, and we sent a survey out to all uh, residents at our elderly sites to gauge interest on on-site beauty services, such as haircuts, beard trimming, nail painting, and other services. We've had a good response to the survey so far and hope that those who have not turned theirs in will do so soon. We, hope, uh, we held one Dementia Friends workshop with Kathy Services Service as the presenter. Uh, we had many residents attend and it was very interactive and informative. Their goal is to help people understand five key messages about dementia, how it affects people and how we can each make a difference in the lives of people living with the disease. Kathy has agreed to schedule workshops at our other properties in the upcoming months. Um, I also had uh, sent out today the annual report um, I'm not going to read this 20-page uh, document, um, although it is posted on our website um, and uh, has been sent out. do want to apologize. Uh, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton brought to my attention that her full name was not used um, and uh, that the, we used the wrong picture. So I apologize, Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, for that, and I will correct it um, in uh, next next year. It had already been sent out, though. Um, are there any questions about the annual report? Yes. Um, <clears throat> is in terms of spelling, um, you got my first name wrong too. <clears throat> oh boy! It's R E Y and not E R Y. No big deal, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. Sorry about that, Commissioner Jones. All right. Um, I will correct that um, for with next year's report. Any others? Uh, you have a question for Commissioner Corner, please. Yes. Am I recognized? Yes, please, Commissioner oh, Okay, Carver. sorry. I'm just trying to Thank follow you. protocol. Um, yes. Um, if, if that's possible next year, I hope to have another picture with me a little slimmer. So um, the, the picture that's there, that's an old theater folk. So um, theater profile fo uh, photo and the uh, the one that I took was on the our website. So I know I sent that some months ago. So um, hopefully I'll have another uh, pic uh, picture. Uh, my question is like when I'm seeing some of the properties and stuff. And I wondered if those pictures of Salvo, were they before or after the power wash? It was before. Yeah, because it was really hard. It was kind of like in a distance, you got an idea where it was, but it wasn't sort of a close up picture of some of the properties. Um, it looked like it was a lot of work that went into that. I mean, other than the name and whatever, uh, little things like that. So that's not anything to... Um, that's not a major reason. I think that seems very minor in comparison to the whole thing. I, uh, it would just be nice if we can also get clearer pictures of the properties, especially they look, uh, Savo looks so much nicer these days. Madam Chair, I don't know if you can see it, but um, Commissioner Jones's hand is raised. I don't know if that's old or new. Commissioner Jones, do you have a question about the report? Um. Yeah, this is new. I, I just want to, um, I don't want to be negative um, about it. I actually read the report this afternoon and I really appreciated it. And I think our annual report has come a long way uh, through the year. So I would, I would compliment the staff on putting that together. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. <laughs> I appreciate that. I do remember it from before. Um, Madam Chair, if I may ask uh, one of the commissioners a question. Yes, please. Um, Commissioner Tarbutton, um, your ID documents um, and your city application um, all have kind of different information. Can you clarify for us how you would like to be addressed your city application for being on the chair on the, on the board has you as Joella Tarbutton but then you have Joella Tarbutton Springfield, and then you have another one, Joella Scoville Tarbutton Springfield. 
Could you just clarify once and for all how you would like things to be done? Sure, of course. Thanks for asking. Firstly, the middle name is a family name and it's Stovall, <laughs> not Stovall. Um, my name is actually two, I have a long name. Joelle is two names, basically J-O capital E-L-L-A. And Tar Button hyphen Springfield is my legal name. And I think uh, it's Tar Button Stovall, I mean, Joella Stovall Tar Button hyphen Springfield. And I know I've sent information. Oh, actually I just did it. Uh, when I did the driver's license, I sent my uh, passport card, passport. It has yeah. all the names. The reason so why- One document has a space in between the Joe Ella and one doesn't have a space between the Joe Ella. Well, I mean- I was, Yeah, I was gonna go into the reasons with that. The reason that uh, uh, it's, I signed it as tar button is that it's long. It won't fit on my driver's license. So for that reason, and then also what a lot of stuff when you're doing, I have, they put them together. And so it's caused a problem actually. And so, but it is for technical uh, reasons, legally, le legal document, it would be Joella, J-O space, capital E-L-L-A, um, tar button, T-A-R-B-U-T-T-O-N hyphen Springfield, but I do sign it as tar button. And then, you know, to complicate things with my nickname being Jada, ah, oh, I'm here and like to complicate things. So that's what it is, but I would appreciate. So um, however you're in the system, um, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton, um, is how you'll have to sign all of our documents. So if I, I mean, I, I don't certainly don't mind changing it. If you want me to change it, anything you sign with us would have to be signed out Tarbutton Springfield. Right now, I, because your application with the city only had tar button, I've, um, when I put you into the HAFIS system for DHCD, um, I only put that. So I'm happy to change it, but you would require you to sign everything the long way. Is that okay? Well, as, as I told you, I signed my signature as tar button, but of course. Okay, all right. So you want, I want to make sure I'm clear. You want right. to get to the hyphenated name, tar button Springfield, and, um, and I will do that tomorrow morning. Or, okay. yeah, and my, Joella is not hyphenated, please. No, it's just a space. I got it. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions uh, for the executive director regarding the report? Then I think we are ready to move to unfinished business. <clears throat> um, and I think that you indicated that there might not be any update on the standing topic of the um, water remediation at Hampton Heights, but do you want to update us as to the lack of update? Uh, we just, we are expecting something this uh, to come this week, but it just hasn't come from DHCD yet. Um, so we don't have any update to give you at this time. Um, I did think about tabling it, but you know, thought better to just tell you that there was no new news. Okay. Then I think we can move right on to the new business, which is on the agenda, which is, and I don't have the title, let me pull that title up. Uh, the new business topic is around our policy on board training, travel and reimbursement. And I think I'm going to defer uh, right now to the previous chair, if that's okay, just to introduce us to the conversations that may have happened regarding this particular topic and how it arrives now on our agenda. Um, certainly, uh, Chairperson Carney. <clears throat> we, um, to my knowledge, we have not had a budget or um, any sort of parameters or uh, priorities around um, board training. Staff has some training that uh, they have been budgeted for, and um, but but not the board. So um, that's the context that we're talking about right now. Are shall we have a budget uh, for training? And I. Don't think we have one this year, but if we want one in the future, we should state. And then under what parameters might we might might we consider one of uh, uh, appropriate for training? Is, does that? Is yes, that, that 
helpful. And I guess in order to open that up um, for discussion, I'll ask one more clarifying question. Um, it's just uh, I can I can speak just from my own memory of being on the board, but I'll have uh, actually ask if the executive director can clarify. I don't recall there being a budget in the past, or at least any any anything separated out for um, board member training in any of my recollection, mm -hmm. nor do I remember going as a board member to any trainings in the past. Um, I just want to know if that's something that's, do we have, is there anything that you have for past practice that could clarify and enlighten us? So I have a couple of things, if I may. Um, we um, received a lot of requests um, over the last year for, um, for reimbursement for training for uh, some, from for commissioners. Um, and when we did the 23 budget, we did increase our uh, number a little bit. Uh, to try to cover uh, something, but because there's no policy in place, um, when you're talking about travel, hotel, meal reimbursement, mileage reimbursement, um, you know, uh, an example is in fiscal year 23, we have budgeted $6,300. Um, and the resident services coordinators, all three of them go to the national um, uh resident services coordinator training and that's going to cost five thousand nine hundred and twenty two dollars um i just paid two thousand nine hundred and sixty two dollars and four cents for the board training that we did um additionally dhcd is requiring some specific trainings for staff and what i would uh say to you all is that um that if you utilize this money or any portion of this money for board members to go and receive training, you're taking it away from staff. Um, uh, and so lastly, the accounting manual for uh, DHCD um, has that it's for travel for um, policies that are consistent, uh, travel practices and policies consistent with policy. You don't have one for board members, you have one for staff. Legitimate travel and related expenses incurred by uh, staff in the or board members in the charge of their duties is reimbursable from this account based on the following considerations. Um, essentially that uh, it has to be within 40 miles of the where the housing authority is. Um, and if it's not within 40 miles, then we could consider uh, doing um, a, a hotel room um, and private auto mileage um, also would would be reimbursable. Um, currently, I did check the the whole entire. Um, uh, I believe since two thousand and three is when HAB came online to see if we've ever paid for or sent anyone to um, training on a board on the board, um, and only since I've been here have we done that. Um, um, and so what I have been faced with, just so that you all know as a board, is I have been faced with a lot of requests for training. Um, and in some instances, they have not uh, been um, something that would benefit the housing authority or be appropriate for that. Um, and in some cases they would be, but we just didn't have the budget for it. I don't want, I, I'm, I'm saying to you that I don't wanna have to be the person that says, oh, well, you can't do that this time um, or have to take it away from staff. You know, sexual harassment training is needed. Um, fair housing training is needed for staff as well. Um, but in addition, but in addition to that, um, uh, I, I think that we need to have a policy and we need to have the policy state uh, that if someone from the board wants to attend a training, that it should go before the board as a vote. Um, and I have not found uh, any, there are other housing authorities that send people occasionally to conferences. Usually it's the chair um, or the executive director. I have not gone to many of the conferences and or trainings just to save money because we do have a large staff. Um, and I, I think that um, it was, it was taken that we just didn't want to do it for this person. And that wasn't the case. It was just that we didn't have the budget for it. 
And I don't feel comfortable authorizing just any training that someone wants um, if it's not relevant to the agency or gonna be benefit the agency. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna ask then um, for some, just go, go to discussion, starting with Commissioner Tarbutton, followed by Commissioner Cancel. And then if other folks would like to raise their hands, um, I'll take that. And before I do, yes, yes. I'm, uh, sorry. I'm sorry, I did forget. Uh, I did pull all 237 North, um, Massachusetts housing authorities to find out if in fact they had a policy so that we weren't reinventing the wheel. Um, and I, I received the responses back that they don't, um, they don't. No one in Massachusetts had a policy for their board members um, to go to training. So um, I've started kind of coming up with a little something just based on what they're saying here. Uh, but I, I welcome the input to help me further that along. Okay, let me then turn it to Commissioner Tarbutton. Commissioner Chair, uh, Carney, can I defer to uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Consell right now? I'm just looking up something right quickly. And, and I go Commissioner Cancel, okay. please. I'm sorry. Commissioner Cancel, please. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, it is my understanding um, that it is actually uh, Massachusetts law under 121B that um, uh, requires board training. Um, and so I would, I would guess that's probably the reason why other housing authorities don't necessarily have a policy um, because I would guess, again, this is, I'm not 100% sure, but I would guess that you don't need a policy um, if the state um, requires you uh, to take training. Um, in either case, I believe that it shouldn't be a uh, uh, staff or board. It's, we should create a budget and wish, and if we, uh, uh, if it is not required by law, we should certainly uh, create a policy within our bylaws uh, to um, have a budget, um, certainly uh, uh, for trainings that are, um, um, uh, you know, related to uh, housing. Uh, and so I would suggest that um, we just kind of look, look into that and then potentially uh, move forward um, with trying to create a budget for board training. I mean, it just makes sense. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. Are you ready for your comments, Commissioner Tarbutton? I am indeed. Um, well, the thing is from uh, <laughs> when I came here, there were a lot of new people and I kept saying, we need training. We need DEI training. I need training on this, not just the required one um, that DAC provides because that gives us a whole overall training. And um, and yes, oh, two days ago, you had a trainer for someone who came and said, look, these are things that you should be going to. Uh, and when I was in his class, because I will be possibly the only board member here who is NARO certified to receive a NARO certification. And it is when I was there, people were like, I've never seen anyone from uh, this area. So I think that in my opinion, I think we're lacking because uh, the other day in those meetings that the board went to, you learned something. We learned something about the minutes. Uh, we learned a couple, a, a lot of things. I think that was a great foundation for us to be hearing the same thing from the same person about the same thing. I think that that was great. I just don't understand the hesitancy. As a matter of fact, and taking one of his classes when they went to a convention, he said, yes, of course, there's 12,500 bucks that are in the budget for that. I didn't know that. I gave the uh, ahead of time two or three months beforehand. And I have to tell you something, guys, and I don't care how people look at this. I was the only resident board member there who had to pay for their own way. I mean, it was an audible gap. So if that's all right with you, we're doing with the money. You can find money for training. It's just you know, I grew up here in the sand. A mine is a terrible thing to waste. And I can't believe that we don't want to see that as a priority and not make it seem like, well, you know, I hate for somebody not to go to uh, sexual education training. I mean, no, in addition to that, we need that. 
And luckily, 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 most of the training that I got to, from this NARO certification was free from NARO. They recognize resident board members don't have money to go to that. And it's a, actually quite a good rate for uh, board members. It's uh, no more than 250 bucks, but luckily they give a discount or else I wouldn't be able to do that. And most of the stuff I do find free or I always ask for a scholarship. And so I think that this is an opportunity that's a, that really isn't good for any of us. I mean, you can make time, we're all busy, um, but that's there. I mean, one organization I'm with, they pay for it ahead of time. And there's all these things I didn't pay much attention to is like, you know, I don't know where we're getting these. I, I feel like we get these really outrageous prices that I know I'm with other things and I go to. The one thing I did ask, of course, I'm going to ask and send people stuff. I'm almost regretful. I don't want to, it feels very lonely that I'm the only one getting this information. I'd like to see other people get information just like we did the other day and talk about it. Um, but I think that it is really, I, I, I'm actually very surprised. I was surprised after saying, where's the DEI that were free? And finally, like overnight, they're like, oh, we can do this for the staff for free. So it's not, we it don't seem to be in the habit of looking for ways to educate. I know the uh, former chair talked about it a lot. We have to do it. We have to do it. And I had to end up finding it out on my own. And so I think that that's not a very good look, I think, guys, to say no. And the only reason why I picked it hearing from that uh, person who did our training says, yeah, there's this much money that's always there for professional development. I know it's on the evaluation. And so I did that beforehand. And I don't know if Maureen, if you've ever been to, I went to another convention, uh, it was political and it says uh, register now or you're gonna pay double. And I didn't, huh? And I didn't pay for it. And I almost had to pay double for the insurance. I mean, for the hotel and it took a lot of months getting that clarified, but I am in the whole quite a lot. And I have to tell you, it's absolutely worth it. And it just seems really, I think, very unfair for folks with all the monies and grants and all of the stuff that people get that you can't send your board staff. Many boards used to have lots of money. So I guess they didn't worry about it, but can't send with welcome arms, your board members and staff members too, to go and get further training on the issues. I, and as it says in our handbook, learn, learn everything you can with this, learn the policies, learn to this, learn to that. So unless we want somebody to tell us what the rules are and us not probing and asking questions and looking into it. Uh, and I do think it is a lot. I'm trying to, I was trying to reach, uh, send an email now to the uh, uh, attorney saying, isn't that law? I know it's in the evaluation. Well, Just a minute. Uh, is that a question? Hold on one second. I have uh, Commissioner Richard's hand, and I think that if you were, if Commissioner Tarbutton, were you asking a question? No, I, I wasn't asking a question. I was wondering why that, well, I guess you could pose it as a question. Why isn't that part of who we are, part of the board in okay. our learning process, our professional learning process? And the only question is that I'm almost certain that it's a, a, a part of our law, Massachusetts laws. And I know that for sure it is in the evaluation about professional development and the Thank staff. That. Okay, thanks for that comment. I'll ask for an answer to that question. And just after I ask for Commissioner Richard's comments. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I'm not, I've never heard of that. And uh, $4,500, I've never heard of that. But there's a lot I haven't heard about. Anyway, um, what I wanted to say was the training that the state requires, the training that we all did on computer around open meeting and you know a bunch of other and history of the housing authorities, et cetera. That's the required training. There are other NARO trainings. I've been to a, one or two of them that are very good, that are free. I agree with Commissioner Tarbutton. And I think that's what Attorney Driscoll was saying to us, they're free, uh, go if you can. So, so we do have that required stuff. And then there are some um, that um, we can attend for free. So I think what we're talking about are the ones that aren't free. <laughs> okay, so uh, before I go, and before I go to uh, Executive Director Leeper, I'm again going to just circle back. Um, I'm going to circle back to what the qu the question is. 
we have a budget now for training. And right now, the executive director is in, is in the unfortunate position to approve or disprove, disapprove training requests, not only from her staff, but also from board members, because it has to go through, through the executive director's office. It has to be charged to a particular budget item, budget, budget line, et cetera. So I think this is coming up as a discussion so that it will relieve the executive director of the responsibility to approve or disapprove, so to speak, any requests from board members for, for training that is not free. So I think that's how I understand that how this came up. It's not necessarily saying that that's gonna be a process or anything like that. Now, before I go to Commissioner Tarbutton, who has her hand up again, I want to see if there are comments we might hear from uh, Commissioner Jones or Commissioner Brooks. And then we could do the circle maybe once more. Anything from either of you guys? I guess that uh, when I joined the board, I uh, before I joined the board, I did as much reading as I possibly could um, going through um, uh, the state um, in whatever uh, in whatever uh, literature they have. So I, I, I'm going to say that if you want to do if you want to uh, expand your your knowledge of uh, being a board member, that's the way I approach it, or, and I still approach it that way. Um, I do a lot of investigation, but I have a lot of time too. Um, other people, uh, other people don't have as much time as I do. So, um, you know, there's there's all kinds of uh, things on the on the state um, uh, site where you where you can investigate the knowledge of the OML or or, or any of the other actual laws um, concerning uh, housing boards. So, so the information's out there. You just got to dig around a little bit, look for it. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Brooks. Anyone else? Jim, Jim, don't call me, call me Mister, please. Jim. <laughs> um, okay, not hearing anyone. I'm going to go first back to Executive Director Leeper, who, and then I'll go back to Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes, please. So I want. Um, I I I could. I'm faced with um, a request to attend one of the conferences, um, uh, and and there's it's not specific. NARO has um, different chapters. It has the national chapter and the Massachusetts chapter. Um, the Massachusetts chapter for their spring conference, and they hold four or five of these every single year, is four hundred and thirty nine dollars, and I printed it, um, and one hundred seventy nine dollars a night for the hotel at two nights. And then the national conference, which is in New Orleans, is uh, the regular rate is $895. Um, and then there's airfare, there's meals, there's this, there's that. So my dilemma isn't whether or not board members can uh, should get training or not. It's just that um, in the instance where Commissioner, if some, in the instance where Commissioner Tarbutton requested last year for us to pay for uh, uh, a convention that was not budgeted for. We asked her to wait for the next year and we increased the budget so that she could attend the next one. She attended anyway. And so even uh, because we had not budgeted for it, we couldn't pay for it. Um, and that went all over. And then uh, this year, I just need to know the specifics that she's asking for, but. Can you all see what my dilemma is at this point? I have one commissioner that's asking for trainings. If I ended up with another commissioner that was asking for trainings, I have to pull that money from somewhere. Um, in addition to that, one of the trainings was a train the trainer to become certified to train in DEI. I didn't feel that that was something because you know she, she wouldn't be ethically allowed to train board members or train staff or, or whatnot. And so paying that 700 and something, $800 just didn't feel like it was for the right purpose. But those are the dilemmas that I'm facing. Not that I don't think board members should receive training, but I just need some kind of direction is all. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. And before I go, go then to Commissioner Tarbutton, because we haven't heard yet from Commissioner Jones, who's got his hand up now. Jeff, please. Thank you. Um, just a few things. Um, <clears throat> back in the day when I started, um, being on the board was like learning a foreign language. You started out from the beginning understanding that there's a ton of stuff that you don't know. And you ask a bunch of questions and you observe and you listen and you build on it. And then you ask even more questions and eventually um, you get a working knowledge. And then of course other things would come up and that's the way it goes. But um, in my own uh, union local, um, I have an executive board and we ask our executive board for prior approval before we send folks out for conferences and training. We do not um, go to the training and then submit a bill um, after the fact. Although I'd have to say in my cases, if somebody did that, um, we'd probably have a, a working knowledge of why that happened and it probably wouldn't be um, that big of a bump in the road. The third thing is I think Mass General Laws does talk about um, training of some kind within roughly a two year period. Uh, mass narrow certification is not in the Mass General Laws. Right. It says training. So um, I think a lot of the stuff that we do, I think there's a regular rotation where people have to have open meeting law training and people have to have mm -hmm. ethics training. Um, but I think a lot of the stuff we do can probably, um, especially since COVID be done uh, virtually. Oh. And I think the experience that the board had last Friday with attorney Driscoll was wonderful. Um, even though a lot of the stuff um, I had already heard over and over again. It's always useful to have a review process and to be refreshed. And I did actually learn a lot of new things too. So that's the kind of stuff that it was good to see the board there as a as one unit um, interacting with each other and and learning um, what he had to say. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Commissioner Tarbon. Yes. Well, let me just uh, set the record straight because I think there's a bit of a falsity going out um, regarding the training that I went to. I, I asked. I didn't just go and say, oh, pay me back. I didn't do that. And I wouldn't do that. I asked two or three months beforehand. And I have to tell you, I didn't even know about it until I was taking one of those class for the NARO certification. And I don't know anyone else, but I'm not saying it's a requirement. But if, you know, people got NARO cert certification, it's just like, you know, get an acknowledgement um, for the work that you've done and the training that you've done. I didn't say that that part was uh, necessarily the law, but I think that would that would be more of a positive optic than a negative one. And I, I asked beforehand because I learned about it in one of the classes. I didn't know what a convention was. And I thought that I was to receive a certification. Uh, a class got canceled and changed because of something. So I'm one course shy of it. So I was to get a certification from that. And I went there and I'm telling you, there are people, a lot of people who got it. It brought tears to people's eyes that they line them up. They give them a, they give them a fake certificate, just like a graduation. And then you go, I will take one class now and I'll have my certification. Whether or not this board recognizes or not, I think that says a lot about the board. Uh, I think that from my understanding, and I've been trying to text and find that law, I'm not very good at doing two things, but there's a what is it, Mass General Law? I, asked, I would like Tom to look that up if possible. 20, uh, 121B Section 7 regarding compensation um, for training and then the 121B 5B, I think. I'm not quite sure I, uh, what, it, what it is, but I just want to get that out straight. And the whole part about DEI training for folks, again, guys, and, it's, and then people have their different learning styles. So it's not one just learning style that one person does that works for everybody. So I would group question. It's one thing to read. I'm an actress. We have our scripts. We can read it, but if we don't get together and talk about it, some things get lost there. So I don't know why that feels like it's like, well, I do it this way. This is how I learn. Good for you. So I just would like for folks to think about 
how that benefits the board. And if a DEI, you're looking at your people here, there are lots of cases where people are talking about discrimination, how they feel, learning styles, this styles here. How could that not help to have someone there? It didn't say you have to have uh, uh, classes on it, but that's a contributing factor. You heard from um, Jeffrey, D Attorney Jeffrey D uh, Driscoll that the more diverse, the more enriched. And so that's not for me selfish reasons. I, you know, I, 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 maybe because growing up education was denied to me, that's probably why I have so many degrees. Not that it's, it has helped me in ways because I'm enriched and I find it very rewarding. But to, I think the part about someone saying I did this and then came back with a fee, no, I submitted it in. And because I was told, everybody does it. I don't, up until when I was there, did I realize, I don't know how many people were there, maybe 500. That was the only one who had to pay for it. And uh, a lot of the things are free. Um, and then I think one of the things that happened, we have the Mel King Institute. The Mel King Institute came about because of what had happened with Chelsea. They like, we need to educate our boards. We need them to have a working knowledge other than somebody telling them what their rules are. So that's came back and all of that stuff is free, all of that. And I just want to say one thing for it, because people are like, oh, I don't know why we're doing DEI. I don't know about racism. We've had problems in this building, as a matter of fact, with some issues. And the first training they had here for residents, resident leaders, was about racism. First time we ever talked about it here. And you have people here of different races, different classes, different language skills, different physical abilities. And somebody is like, I don't know why we need such a thing. We need it. Whether or not you utilize it, you can find things, you can find money for it and make it important. It has to, it's, I guess it's not a priority. It's a priority for me. And I'll, and I'll be done with it. You decide whatever you want to decide on. Just realize you have different styles and that the more educated you are, that's fine. And there are some groups, other groups that I would pay for it. Um, the one about being a racist trainer, that's from another group that I'm with. But I'll send it out to folks here. I, I, I think maybe I won't. If people find that to be all oh, these requests that I'm getting, I, I'll leave it. You can stay the way you are. Okay, is there anybody else who has a comment to follow up? Um, I'll ask one more time, Commissioner Cancel, is there anything you'd like to add to this discussion regarding how we can generate more resources to satisfy some of the training needs that we may need at the board level um, that may not be presently budgeted for in our line items in our housing authority budget. Um, and if there isn't a specific, oh yes, thank you. I think I saw an unmute going on there from Commissioner Cancel. And if not, then I'm gonna circle. Oh, okay, please, Edgar. Okay, uh, no, thank you. I was just saying that, um... Yeah, I'd be happy to uh, look into uh, ways in, in which we can um, uh, make this uh, possible um, for both staff and um, boards. And I would ask that um, we um, uh, take it, um, uh, uh, table it until next meeting. Okay, yes, definitely. But I'd like to give uh, co uh, Commissioner Jones one more chance since he had his hand raised, please. Um, just, just that, um, isn't the fiscal year ending June 30th and we might be in a position to address the budget for training going forward. And I think we, um, are probably in general agreement that there should be some kind of training increase and we might want to think about amending, um, the training part of the budget for the next fiscal year. And that's all I have. Good point. Thank you. Thank you. It definitely sounds like it's a discussion that needs to continue on until at least, uh, at least it, into the next meeting. And um, I really appreciated what people had to say, especially uh, Edgar, thank you for saying that you might look into some of those ways that we might uh, generate some other Kind of freeze. And even if we had a list too, because the majority, it sounds like the majority of these trainings, as Attorney Driscoll had told us, and as we've heard from Commissioner Tarbot and many other people, the majority of these are free, are free trainings. 
And to the extent that we can take advantage of those, I think is obviously preferable. And whether we can make the best use of resources to find the best trainings that are appropriate for us is just how we'll approach the next. Uh, before I go to Commissioner Richards, uh, Director Leeper had her hand raised. Something? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Was that to me? Yeah, I thought you had your hand raised, but maybe- I did, I did. I just, um, I did increase, just so the board knows, I increased the 2023 budget. Um, I just, um, I, I would just like us, uh, like you guys, to come up with a policy. You know, for example, ask for it well and in, enough in advance that I can present it to the board um, and then, you know, take, is it applicable? Um, for example, rent certification training. You know, if a board member wants to take rent certification training, which I heard a board member is doing, you know, but they want us to pay for it. I, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I just don't want that responsibility is all uh, alone. And so um, well, I, what we heard, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt. I'm just saying that I think that what we heard was that we may want to consider whether um, something like that might be appropriate in terms of prior approval from the board if it's yeah. a for a board member themselves, as yes. opposed to the people completely under your purview and your staff. Yeah. But if there would be a separate sort of prior approval, I think I heard that mentioned, but it's something that would be discussion. And But I think we hear that the complication for you is having to approve or deny board members yeah. when maybe that would be better um, done at the board level. Yes, thank you. Perfect. So I'm gonna to go to Commissioner Richards and then again, Commissioner Tarbutton. I just um, think it might be a good idea for people to think about individually what they might need for training and uh, send it, do not send it to everyone, but send it to um, Chairperson Carney and CC um, Executive Director Leeper so that we might get a sense of what people think they might need. Uh, and I would agree that things need to be applied for and it should be probably a board decision. The other thing is that I do appreciate, um, uh, Joella, you sending out uh, possibilities for training. There's some good stuff that you've really sent out. So if we can just somehow make available the free ones, um, I think that would be um, a step forward. And then continue the discussion on parameters next time as uh, Commissioner Jones suggested. Okay, then if Commissioner- I have a clarifying question. Like to have the last word on this, please. Yeah, sure. Um, I just wanna say, um, I, there was no training on recertification. There was a training that I'm going through this through Mel King that talks about that. And um, there were some questions that came up with the public housing notice and I'm just redoing that again, figuring out what that is. So there was a question about recertification and attestation to it and uh, notices to quit. So that's what I asked about before I turn mine in, I wanna know a little bit more about it. Um, so that's it. I think what happens is, again, uh, things are getting mixed up and people are hearing a little bit of something and not. And many times, just like Commissioner uh, Richard said, I send out things that I think of interest. Believe me, I'm on so many mailing lists with so many variety of different things. So I feel like I, I, I do get the training. I just want to share it with folks. So, and then somehow they get added up. This cost this. this. I'm not talking about NARO, the national. As a matter of fact, NARO is going to Washington, D.C. right now. I didn't think about asking that because I, I didn't see how that related to what we were doing. I was asking about the mass NARO based on the training that I had went through. So I get word when some part of a truth gets there and then it's blasted out as though it's uh, word in stone. And so I, I worry about how things, it's almost like the gossip game. You know, It's like by the time it gets there, a little part of it is true. And it's just all uh, blown out of proportion. So I just wanted to make that clarifying. And I asked two or three months before the convention was. And the reason why I say that, I went to one convention, as I told you, and I said, I'll just ask early. So um, that's what it was. And I want to clarify that instead of it was 
it wasn't afterwards. And thanks for folks. If you do appreciate it, I'll send it, send stuff too. I think things are interesting. This is an ever-changing world and things are coming up all the time that is good to be on top of, especially regarding our community, regarding our uh, place here and um, housing and all that. And so I'm just like a kid. I was nosy. And again, I'll say it till, I'm, uh, till the day I dry, uh, learnings from the, uh, what is it? The cradle to the grave. And I know what it's like. I've seen and grew up with people. And it is true. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. On that note, do we have one final motion? I think I heard Commissioner Brooks trying to ask us to adjourn, but he wasn't, he was muted. <laughs> no, you got to. You're muted, Jim. I can read his lips. I read his I lips. He said motion to adjourn, but he's muted. <laughs> Second. Well, we got to hear it. We got to hear it. Okay. There he is. Motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, and that is non debatable, folks. So, Six all those. Two, bye.